I recently expanded the size of my map in this game that I'm building to be much larger. And in doing so, I notice a huge performance decrease or impact in my game. You can see in the bottom right, there's an FPS counter. I used to get 120, and now I'm getting like 47. And if you go into the performance tab of the browser and actually throttle this thing a little bit, let's throttle it four times, you'll notice that you get very, very, very slow performance. Like I'm getting like 10 FPS, 9 FPS. So how do we check where the game is using up the most of its CPU? So one thing we can do is if you go to performance and just click on this record button over here, and then I'm gonna quickly just uncheck it, you'll get something called a flame graph, right? This flame graph tells you where a majority of the cycles of the program spend its time. So here in the top bar, this is where I'm gonna zoom in a little bit and just try to like find a repeating pattern. And it looks like we got a really good pattern. So over here, you'll see that every tick, there is a render function that gets called. And this render function is taking about 18 seconds almost. So if you do 1000 divided by 18, notice that you'll get 55 frames per second, which is kind of like what we're seeing over here. We see, you know, 51, 61. It kind of bounces around depending on what's going on in the game. So now in the flame chart, what you can do is keep on looking down to try to figure out what all stack, like what functions this render function calls. And it looks like it's calling a render ground that takes about 0.7 milliseconds. It calls a render collidables. It calls a render entities. And then it calls a render darkness. And this seems like it's eating up a majority of all the time here. So the first thing I would probably do to try to verify is this where the slowdown is happening is I'm gonna go to my renderer in the game client. This is basically like it has a render function and it just kind of loops over every uh, animation frame. And you'll see here's the high level logic of like how it's rendering everything. It basically renders the ground and then the collidables, renders some entities, some particles, and then it calls render darkness. So I'm gonna go ahead and just comment this out. And I wanna just refresh the page and see what happens to my FPS. So notice it's back to 120. And if I were to clear this out and just do a quick little profile once again, we can kind of see that the render function now takes 3.3 seconds. Okay, so that's by far where the biggest issue is, is in this render darkness function. All right, so let's try to focus on this one because this is where most of the uh, performance issues are happening. Now in this function, there's not too much going on here. Basically it gets all the light sources in the game. Like you can have a torch, you could have the player object, basically anything that can emit light. We have to calculate the shadows on all the tiles based on these, these lights that are being emitted. And, you know, if there's a bunch of lights in one area, you're going to go ahead and make stuff much more bright, etc. Um, I would bet money that this one is probably taking the most time, calculate light propagation. So what I would recommend doing next, if these things are not showing up in your flame graph, you could simply just say console.time and you can just, uh, you know, calculate how long it takes to run a particular function. So I'm going to save this. We can go back and instead of using the performance tab, I'm going to go to console, just do a hard refresh. And you'll see we get outputs. This takes around, you know, 2.8 to around three milliseconds. So overall, I think we were looking at what, 18 seconds? Yeah, we did it, 1,000 divided by 18. So this is taking around three milliseconds to run this. Not the biggest time sink, but we could probably improve this. Let's also do it here. So I'm gonna go ahead and just cut this out. And then I'm gonna put a console.time and then we're going to render it out there. And we're gonna see how long this one also takes. So this one, let me do a hard refresh. And now notice that render darkness is up to 10 milliseconds. So again, when you're trying to do performance tuning, it's probably good to figure out like where is the code eating up the most of your render cycle? Or if this is like, you know, server code, you should probably figure out like where it's eating up all the server tick rate. So we're gonna hone in on this one because it's taking about 10 milliseconds to render out all of the tiles. Basically all this does is it loops over the entire map and then it figures out what color like darkness tile it should draw over that area based on those light sources. Now, if you know anything about coding, this is a O of N squared loop. We're basically looping over a giant 2D array. So what we're gonna do instead is I do have a get visible tile bounds, and that is going to return to us the start X and the start Y of the closest tiles to our player. So I'm gonna say close tiles, um, I'll say visible tiles. And we can just go ahead and call that. And then we should get a good start location that we can actually start looping over all this. So instead of having to loop over the grid, we can actually loop over the recommended closest visible tiles. So I'm gonna go ahead and just move that console time up there. And I do believe we should probably just double check that we're not out of bounds here. 
Um, but yeah, let's just go ahead and go back to the game. I'm going to do a refresh here and notice that we get render times of about 0 0.9, 0 0.7. So again, this is much more efficient and you'll see my FPS is all, all the way up to about 113, 119. So big win there for one little simple uh, line change, right? And, and we can also go to the performance tab and just like do a quick little profile to see, you know, have we improved the render cycle? I'm going to go ahead and just zoom in on one of these. All right. And go ahead and just position that. Okay, so here we have the render. It takes 8.7 seconds. It's still eating up a lot of time. The render darkness is 4.5 milliseconds. Um, calculate light propagation is taking a ton of time for a majority of that. But we did shave off a ton of the time on that other double for loop, and that's a big win. And so anyone who has a weaker computer can hopefully play the game now. And we could get this you know, committed and pushed to production so that we can at least have a nice playable game, but there's still more stuff we can kind of try to improve. Okay, so let's dive into now this one. Basically what this function is doing is we pass in every single light source in the game, regardless if the player is even close to that light source. And then we run a, a loop over every single one. And for every light source, we run a breath first search to expand out from that light source to kind of calculate what the intensity should be at that point. So if you have like three lights next to each other, those three breath first search will end up making that area a lot brighter versus if it only has one light source, um, et cetera. Um, and then eventually this will keep looping until I think it hits a breaking point where stop propagation if intensity is too low or beyond radius. So we do have some checks in place where we don't just infinitely span over the whole map. So I think to improve this, what we could do instead of passing every single light source in the game, we could only pass the light sources which are close enough to the player by some threshold, like a thousand or something. So I'm going to say const uh, current player. Yeah, we can grab that. And then I'm also going to say const uh, light sources in range. We can just go ahead and filter and hopefully we'll get back a certain amount light sources in range. We're going to pass this in. Um, and now we should probably have a lot less things that we're going to be passing every single time. So let's do a hard refresh and then we're going to go back and just clear out this. We're going to run a profile again, stop it, and then we can see if this actually improved our performance of that. So I'm going to go ahead and just roll over over here. So now looking at it, render is at 5 milliseconds, which is a lot faster than it was. It was 18 before. And render darkness is down to 1.9 milliseconds calculate light propagation is 0.46 milliseconds so this is a huge win um, in terms of the lighting of the game and now we're back close to 120 fps again if we were to scale down the uh, the browser is it even playable on like a four time slowdown and it still seems like it is playable it is 41 fps not the fastest but it still kind of works and then you can keep on doing this approach to try to figure out like where else in the code base we can really improve this. Now I did end up having another branch where I'm actually caching the light sources because sometimes you'll have a torch on the ground that doesn't move. And once you've figured out all of the light sources, like intensities based on that, you don't have to keep on running the breath first search over and over again, unless the torch is picked up and dropped somewhere else or unless the player moves. Another thing that I also added was we don't need to recalculate this every game tick. Instead, we can just recalculate it maybe every 200 or 300 milliseconds to really shave off how much time is spent calculating all this stuff. So I'm going to stash these changes and show you we do have a branch um, that's about improving the lighting. And I'm going to go ahead and just check that one out. And I can show you kind of quickly like what's going on here. There is a cache. So there's a light map cache in which we recalculate every so often. So the main change with this cache is we track all the light sources and if one was removed from the scene, we know we have to like uh, invalidate the cache and recompute it. Um, or if a light source's position was moved or you know a new one is added, we then have to recalculate the cache as well. And then we basically have like all these different maps that we just combine together the intensity values to figure out what the overall brightness is. And then we render that out. Uh, around the player's position. Very similar to how we did it before, get visible tile bounds. We kind of rendered out those combinations. And then if I go and check out the performance of this, we are still on four times slowdown. And notice that this branch has around 70 to 60 FPS. Like this is much more performant. And if I were to clear this out and just kind of see what the profile is. All right, so the render is taking, um, render darkness is taking 4.7 milliseconds which is kind of slow, but I do have it on the four times slowdown. Let me actually go back real quick. Let me go here, no throttling, 
we're going to go ahead and clear that out and just test this out real quick. All right, so this is the final result of the refactoring that I did. Again, I kind of just prompted Claude code along the way at this point to make it really, really good. Uh, render darkness takes around one millisecond. So every so often it has to run through. It may reuse some of these cache lightings. It may not. But overall, to do the lighting now, it's extremely fast. Some other places I ended up finding um, performance issues on were the minimap. Basically, this was doing like a, a giant 2D loop as well, which is taking up like three to four milliseconds. So some just bad code that Claude code just auto-generated for me. But it's very easy for me to come back through and like just make it go faster. Okay. Yeah, overall, I don't know if there's anywhere else I can kind of like fine tune. I could probably spend a lot more time making this, you know, shaving off a couple milliseconds here or there. But overall, I think the performance is pretty good, even with a computer that isn't the fastest. Like if I throttle six times slowdown, the game is still playable. Um, granted, I don't know what a six times slowdown machine would be. Like what type of laptop would that be? Something you buy from like Walmart or something? But it's still playable at 45 frames per second. Let me try 20 times slowdown and see what happens there. Yeah, 20 times slowdown is just not playable, okay? But this is probably playing on like an Atari or something. Let's go back to no throttling. And yeah, by watching this, I hope you guys learned something new about, you know, performance profiles, flame charts, how to kind of read the stack trace and figure out what functions are taking the longest time. It is important to understand when you have a, a loop, a game loop or like a server tick loop, Every millisecond that you can shave off in CPU time means that your server is going to be more performant, it's going to use less CPU, and it's going to be able to handle more entities, it's going to be able to handle more players moving around all at once. So it's really good to keep that in mind when you're coding up a multiplayer game uh, that has a game loop, because whenever you add some bad performing code, it's going to end up biting you in the butt later when you try to scale up the size of your map or scale up how many zombies you have running around. All right, that's all I want to talk about in this video. Have a good day and happy coding.